5.8, we're going to talk about overfishing. You want to know about the causes of and impacts related to overfishing. So overfishing is an issue that's really cropped up in the last few decades or so. As we've gotten better at fishing with better technology that can take in a whole bunch of fish at a time, we're now overfishing those, those stocks. Um, because we're taking in so many fish that those populations can't rebound um, and then they get depleted. So we've seen that over time the types of fish that we're catching are both smaller and younger because they're just catching them so quickly they haven't had a chance to grow and reproduce and keep that population at a sustainable level. This is an example of a fish that has been overfished. So the Northwest Atlantic Cod, um, their populations, or not population, I'm sorry, the catch spiked in about 1965 when, you know, they're catching so many fish. But then because they're catching so many fish, that population just went way down. Um, and so they no longer can catch, you know, at a really significant level anymore because the population is just, it's gone. So not only does this decrease the biodiversity in aquatic systems, but it also affects those people that depend on those fish um, for food and for commerce. Because this demand for fish has increased so much, in the short term, it's provided a lot of food and a lot of, um, a lot of business. But without keeping that stock at a sustainable level, um, then it crashes. And then those people that depend on that are then affected too. Another issue related to overfishing is bycatch, and this comes from just how efficient commercial fishing methods are. Um, in addition to catching, you know, tons of fish, it also takes in other species as well. Things like turtles and sharks and dolphins and whales, they all get caught up in, you know, whatever net or long line is catching on all these fish. And because, you know, if they require air, then they get trapped or they get strangled. Um, and it's, it's really awful. Very sad. All right, next we're going to talk about different types of commercial fishing methods. First one being bottom trawling. So bottom trawling uses a weighted net that gets dragged along the floor. Um, and it's kind of like clear cutting, but the ocean floor because it scrapes along the bottom and just takes everything, any coral, um, anything that's down there, it just wipes it all away. And this is a picture of an actual uh, bottom trawling. We see the weights, we see the, the wheels that drag along, um, and then I think it's um, like it's caught in the net will then just be pulled up to the surface. Long line fishing is in the name, it's long fishing lines. Um, it can be up to many miles long, all the little hooks that are baited. And gill nets is kind of like a wall. Um, so fish will swim in it. Because the little holes are so small, they get stuck in it. Like so. Drift nets are a type of gill net that drifts with the current. You see these things can be very, very long. Um, and like I said, so doing it catches not just the fish, but anything that swims through this wall. First signs are, um, what they do is they locate a school of fish and then they throw out this giant net um, and then they'll draw it close. So it's kind of like a drawstring bag and it sends it shut and then pulls it on board. Oh, and I forgot to put a picture over there. Um, sonar has also helped to increase the amount of fish that's been, been caught because they can use sonar now to find schools of fish and then catch them all at once. And so that takes away, you know, the time of having to wait for fish to come and then go out and find the fish. So obviously overfishing is a huge issue and it's really difficult to get everyone on board when they're like, well, this is causing like, I'm getting a lot of money from this. Why don't I, why don't I stop? And it's, it's hard to get people to see a long-term 
goal when the short term right now is so rewarding. So one of the things that has been helpful um, in decreasing overfishing is CITES. So CITES stands for Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species. This is a really important one to know for the AP exam um, because it's very common for them to ask for a law. Um, and this one, it applies to so much and anything international, anything on endangered species. So basically what it is, is an international agreement to ensure that international trade does not threaten the survival of the species. So basically what it does is that each country that's in this, in this committee um, has to have something set up in their country to decrease some illegal trade. Um, and so what they've done, they can use this, like for example in the Great White Shark, I want to say early 2000s, they can use this to decrease a certain fishing method or fishing like in a certain area if it's been shown to um, damage a, a species that's endangered. So the great white shark was endangered and then this was put in place and it helped the population to recover. Other things that can be done are setting catch limits and imposing fees or taxes caught over that limit so it encourages people to not overfish because they have to pay more. And then this is um, 2019 annual catch limits if you're interested on fish that can be found in the Gulf of Mexico. Right, and that is all. So in summary, describe causes of and problems related to overfishing.